Welcome to the session. We have four different speakers today from the Department of Aeronautical Engineering. Mr. P. Shivkumar, Mr. K. Robin Johnny, Mr. R. Rangaraj and Mr. R. Shivkumar who will be taking us through the different facets of aeronautical engineering as a whole. I hope you have a great time. Welcome all of you for this online session on aerodynamics. My name is P. Shivkumar, Assistant Professor of Aeronautical Engineering Department, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College. In this short session, I will be covering what is aerodynamics, what are the applications of aerodynamics in various fields of engineering. Aerodynamics is one of the core domain in the field of aeronautical engineering, where we will study about airflow behavior over objects. Bird fly phenomena is one of the best example to understand aerodynamics, where bird will undergo three phases of flight, takeoff, flapping and gliding because of aerodynamics. Applications of aerodynamics in various fields like automotive, sports, and energy and aircrafts are enormous, but these are all not limited. We have different applications also. Applications of aerodynamics in automotive are enormous. the years, automotive industries have grown well. Um, in order to achieve the best performance on road, this was not this was possible only because of aerodynamics. Aerodynamics over the body and inside the body of any vehicle is also a playing major role for the evolution. Sports. Have you ever wondered how a ball is flying? It is because of aerodynamics. So, over a ball has made the ball to fly to sustain in air. Flow visualization or a ball. Even in cycling, racing car, aerodynamics plays a major role. Even in kite, aerodynamics phenomena 
is very important to make the kite into fly. Reading aerodynamics is one of the new concept to plan the city in most of the developed countries. Applications of aerodynamics in energy field. Wind turbine is one of the best examples for renewable energy source. Air flow over the windmill will make the turbine to rotate thereby it converts into energy. Even household and industrial fans are under the effect of aerodynamics. Applications of aerodynamics in aerospace is more. Right from the first aircraft to the new aircraft, aerodynamics is the key role for the revolution. Without aerodynamics, the evolution of aircrafts wouldn't be possible. There are four types of aerodynamic forces acting on aircraft which makes the aircraft to fly, glide in air. The forces are lift, drag, thrust and weight. Irrespective of the size, type of an aircraft, Aerodynamics is the key role for their success flight. Fighter aircrafts is also having aerodynamic phenomena over them to have a better attitude in air. This is extended for the aerospace vehicle also. Aerodynamics will exist as long as air exists. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. could join me today for this short session on applications of CFD uh, brief intro so uh, my name is uh, Robin Johnny K and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Aeronautical Engineering at uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College Coimbatore so let's get on with the course before every innovation sees the light of day and every robot learns on its own before every automobile safely drives itself Keep right. and every rocket ship reaches the stars. Before every product is printed out of thin air and every digital twin prevents a tragedy. 
before every baby takes her first breath. And every virtual reality becomes reality before every student has the world at their fingertips and every patient gets his sight back. Before all this can become real, there is a designer, an entrepreneur, an engineer, a student, a scientist, a visionary, tirelessly working to create a better world using the most powerful, the most pervasive simulation technology on the planet. Before every product delivers on its promise, there is ANSYS. I included the video not to endorse the company or the software ANSYS, but to give you an idea of what safety is. Computational fluid dynamics or safety for short is a case where we use computers to solve fluid dynamics problems. So why do we need this? Why do we need fluid dynamics at all? Well, we live in a world of motion and every movement that you make interacts with the fluids. So an understanding of fluids is incredibly useful. Because anything that flows, liquid or gas, is a fluid. Using this knowledge of fluids, scientists and engineers can design pressure sensors, hydraulic pumps and even airplanes. Dynamics are done traditionally using analytical and experimental procedures, but with the advent of fast computers, so-called supercomputers, the decade-long field of CFT has come into the light, which allows anybody with a suitably fast PC able to simulate flows around objects and study fluid dynamics through computations. We are here today to look at where CFT is being used to learn and understand more about fluid dynamics. Aviation. Yes, CFT was brought about as a method of solving complex fluid dynamic problems. Making a huge chunk of metal rise up in the sky, just like the one you see on the video here, carrying 300 odd passengers is no easy task. This is all thanks to the principles of fluid dynamics by which lift is generated by the aircraft wings that keeps it afloat. I'm sure you would already know that from the previous lectures. Now this feat of engineering is something to marvel at. When aircrafts were first designed, there were only analytical and experimental methods to prove the feasibility of design and sustainability of the aircraft. This meant it was more tedious for the designers and manufacturers to come up with new designs as they ha would have to undergo various experiments to be certified for even production. CFD did exist a decade ago, but the computing power limitation crippled those methods. Today that is not a problem. The video you see here is not a CFD simulation, but a gameplay trailer to a game titled Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Yes, that Microsoft. As you would have heard from the previous sessions on aerodynamics, it is well understood that optimal aerodynamics is crucial to the fuel efficiency of an aircraft. Safety tools today are capable of simulating such cruise conditions as you see in this video. Takeoff and landing, buffeting, and aerodynamic degradation from icing conditions can all be simulated with much ease and studied for increasing efficiency of the aircraft. Several CFD tools are available that offers various capabilities of simulating fluid flow. The ability to understand how the airflow breaks over the wings at very high angles of attack is crucial to flight performance, which is shown here in the video being played. These tools are able to assess and predict the impact of extremely complex geometries which detail the flow behavior. The influence of jet engine on the high lift system and buffet onset at high speeds allowing stall prediction with incredible accuracy. The visualization it showed here is a collaboration between NASA and Boeing about airframe noise prediction which shows the simulated airflow field around the nose landing gear of a Boeing 777. The visualization is colored by speed from slower green to faster red 
and it shows the velocities. This is another example of a safety simulation on an aircraft that is stalled and spiraling towards the ground. This is another example of CFT being used to simulate and measure the temperature experienced by a space shuttle during re-entry. You can see how the heating, the temperature profile is increased. Automotive and sports. Yes, CFT finds its application in the world of cars and football. There's sleek cars and boxy cars and there's weird things sticking out of race cars. And they are all trying to take advantage of aerodynamics. Being an iterative process, CFT allows designers to alter the shape of the vehicle into any form they want to achieve aerodynamic efficiency. When you take a Formula 1 race car, there are aerodynamic design parts like the front and rear wing, end fences, air box, side pods, underfloor and whatnot, all for increasing the downforce of the car. Here we can see a simulation of a car overtaking another car and the air disturbances associated with it. This is another simulation of airflow over a bike with a rider on board. Moving on to sports, safety simulation find applications in all sort of games. If you recall, every World Cup they change the model of the football. Being a sphere moving through air, it follows principles of aerodynamics and hence CFT helps design better balls that can be used by professional players to make awesome shots. Not only football, you can see golf balls as well. This is a simulation of a rugby ball thrown in the air. The colors represent pressure variations. Another example of CFT is used in sports is shown here. This is a simulation of the famous bicycle races conducted in France, the Tour de France. The simulation was carried out to understand where a contender can ride his bike with the most minimal drag. Based on the different iterations of analyzing, they had concluded the area shown here in green has the least drag compared to all other cyclist locations, nearly 6%, whereas an individual cyclist will experience the entire drag on himself. Buildings? Well, yes, of course. Architects always consult with the CFD specialists before building skyscrapers and planning urban townships. Understanding the interaction of wind with tall structures is crucial to build safer buildings. Here we see a simulation of the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. The contour shown represents the wind velocity. Here is another simulation of a wind flowing past a vast number of buildings. This helps designers, architects to design safer buildings that do not disrupt much of the air around them. These simulations also tend to be useful in designing natural ventilation homes. This is a simulation of airflow past the world famous stadium, the Bernabeu, Real Madrid. This is another simulation of flow past the Singapore Marina Bay and its surrounding buildings. These structures are ingeniously crafted to make use of natural airflow for ventilation. Design of HVAC systems, heating ventilation and air conditioning systems can also be modeled and analyzed using CFD before actually making the product. Here we can see how the room changes color from bright orange to green which shows the cooling of air using air conditioning units that are fit on the ceiling. Hmm, medicine. Wonder how CFD is going to make our life better? CFD for biology is an up and coming field with a lot of advancements already in place. Wonder how an aeronautical engineer can help doctors? CFD is mainly used in simulating flow of blood, especially in cardiovascular regions. Here you can see a simulation of a blood clot formation in the heart. I would like to talk about one particular application in brief. Let's say there's a person with a heart problem. He's first sent to an MRI or a CT scan to get the images of his anatomy. This scanned image is traditionally used by doctors to locate the constriction in the blood vessel and operate on the patient to remove the clot and place a stent in its place. By using CFT, doctors are able to conduct simulations of the heart problem and pinpoint with very good accuracy the location of where the blood vessel constriction is shown. As you can see from the image here, you can identify whether the uh, constriction is significant or not. And using this 3D model developed using CFT, the doctors are able to pinpoint the location of the constriction and then perform a sort of virtual surgery 
to decide on the type of stent to be used on to our day to day life this is just to show you how cft finds applications in the most unprecedented situations here you can see the simulation of a bullet being fired down the barrel of a gun in slow motion you can see the pressure wakes the bullet leaves behind this is another peculiar simulation done by ansys to showcase the proper way of wearing masks during the covid-19 pandemic it shows how the air can still escape from the mouth if a nose clip is not worn on top of the masks as seen clearly through these animations they've also done some cvd simulations on social distancing using a sneeze trigger various interactions between the mannequins are designed to show the safest way to carry out social distancing regulations with oneself as shown in these video clippings animals also come into picture here or particularly birds this is a simulation of a hummingbird that was captured in slow motion the hummingbird was modeled and through cft simulation the flow under the wings of the bird can be captured to study how the bird can hover in one particular location for long periods of time as seen from all the different presentations here i hope we can all agree on the fact that cft has found applications in all fields of engineering and our day to day life not only is it used for aviation and aerospace application but finds its usefulness in automobiles sports medicine buildings and so much more due to restrictions in time i have only included a few examples of what cft can actually do this has only been the tip of the iceberg to introduce and instill that little bit of curiosity in your minds like ai and ml people talk a lot about cft have a look at what's trending in this field and how you can get there there's plenty more to figure out and numerous simulations to run which helps scientists designers and engineers to build better safer and efficient solutions with sustainability in mind thank you for taking your time to know a little about cft and its applications i'm sure you would be thoroughly entertained as well as learned a lot of things from this session so thank you all for your uh, patience now let's get on with the next session students this is rangraj from the department of aeronautical engineering at sri ramakrishna engineering college coimbatore i am here to present you the topic on additive manufacturing the latest technological development in industries have you ever wondered how the products we use in our day to day lives are produced and made in different shapes now here is your answer product manufacturing is classified into four different categories based on their operation they are subtractive manufacturing forming casting and additive manufacture the first three processes are traditional methods whereas additive is the current advanced manufacturing process let me give you a brief description of the traditional methods the first method is subtractive manufacturing from the picture you can see it is a process by which 3d objects are successively constructed by 
cutting material away from a solid block of material. Subtractive manufacturing can be done by manual cutting of the material, but it is usually done with a CNC machine. The second method is the forming. It is the manufacturing process in which the metals are shaped as required by means of mechanical deformation. You can see that the workpiece is reshaped without adding or removing material and its mass remains unchanged. The third method now is the casting process. Casting is the process in which the liquefied material such as molten metal is poured into the cavity of a specially designed mold and allowed to be hardened. After solidification, the workpiece is removed from the dye to undergo various finishing treatments are to be used as a final product. Now comes the latest technology, additive manufacturing. And here the name itself defines the process of adding the material to achieve the desired product. Additive manufacturing is also known as 3D printing, which enables the creative transformation of the fourth industrial revolution. It is the process of converting imaginary objects from a digital design to a physical object using any computer-aided design software, commonly known as the CAD software. You can also use 3D object scanners to scan an object for digitized data. Here, the hardware places the material layer upon layer in precise geometric shapes for the creation of lighter weight, stronger parts and systems. Let us have a glimpse of this video on 3D printing using polymer material to capture the concept much more easily. Now I hope you are clear about what 3D printing is. Here are the steps to print a 3D object. Design and production process. First, design an imaginary 3D model using a CAD software such as Cataya, Creo, Inventor, SolidWorks, etc. Second, slice the created 3D model into hundreds and thousands of horizontal layers using a slicing software such as Cura, 3D Printer OS, Slicer, Octoprint, Astroprint, etc. and save it to a .stl file. Third, run the .stl file in a 3D printer to create a prototype that creates a preliminary model of an end product. A prototype is a simple experimental model of the proposed solution used to test or validate ideas so that the designer concerned can make appropriate refinements or possible changes in direction. It helps to ensure that the design is more focused and well-crafted. Fourth, production of the refined 3D printed prototype. Depending on the parts and its intended use, it is often possible to print parts that perform every bit as well, and in some cases, better than conventionally produced parts. Here, mass production of parts can be achieved in less time. Fifth, customization. 3D printing makes it easier to customize and fine-tune products to a completely new level. Products and accessories designed specifically for the user can be produced without undue cost and very quickly. This applies to aircraft parts, 
motorcycles, accessories such as phone cases, shoes, jewelry, interior decorations, designs or features that can be tailored to a unique purpose. Now here is a 3D metal printing video that could help us understand the processes more quickly. What is additive manufacturing? Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process that creates a physical object from a digital design. An engineer designs the object using computer-aided design, or CAD, software. The 3D design file is then sliced into thin layers and uploaded to an additive manufacturing machine. The manufacturing process begins once an extremely thin layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. A heat source, such as laser or electron beam, then melts the first layer of the 3D design. The platform is lowered and another layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. The layering and melting process is then repeated until the part is complete. The metallic powder is removed and a physical object is revealed. Additive manufacturing allows you to produce parts that are lighter, stronger, and more durable than traditionally made parts. Build times are faster. Engineers can add precise features and complex geometries without increasing cost. In fact, additive manufacturing is revolutionizing the way we work. And here is the question from all of us. What makes additive manufacturing so special? The answer is that traditional methods require a fixed large production area and the goods produced are shipped all over the world and transported to the markets by means of vehicles to reach the hands of customers. This consumes more time for delivery and the cost of the customer product now includes both the transportation charges and the profit of the vendor. In case of 3D printing technology, processes such as shipping, transport and marketing can be completely eliminated and the desired customized production can be handed over directly to the customer. The key benefits of additive manufacturing include cost reduction, reduced weight, faster production times, greater consistency, better surface finishes across aircraft, production of intricate parts with more resilience, lightweight compared to traditional techniques with weight reductions of between 40 and 60 percentage that minimizes the environmental impact of air travel. Producing hundreds and thousands of parts, highly complex and lightweight structures can also be easily produced. It also ensures high stability while allowing the consolidation of multiple parts into a single component. Now let us see the few applications of additive manufacturing. Here is a 3D printer turbine blade of the jet engine in aviation. Other few examples are drone structures, door knobs, air flowing ducts, etc. In aerospace applications, the 3D printer is used in outer space for the production of the parts required for services, which eliminates the launch of a rocket for the supply of goods. In construction, a robotic 3D printing device is used to automate the construction of large structures such as homes and buildings. In the healthcare sector, 3D printing is a good way to produce devices for human aid, dental, bioprinting, etc. Many end-use consumer products such as eyewear frames, furniture, mobile cases, footwear, etc. can be easily manufactured. At present, the aerospace sector consumes high investment in money, large space, increased waste and time for a single mode of transport. In future, the 3D printing can be implemented in aerospace field to reduce storage space, reduce storage cost and reduce waste production of materials. To manufacture end-use paths, prototype and elevate supply chain constraints. To explore groundbreaking innovation via reducing commercial aeroplane travel emissions, constructing in space and even bioprinting in space developing on-site 3D printing operations and investing in the technology, groundbreaking real-time design, processing, trial and implementation of customized components help in aerospace field. I hope that the session would have provided the knowledge on additive manufacturing. Thank you.
what comes to your mind when you hear the word drone this or something like this so what exactly is a drone curious to no travel with me for the next few minutes to get a knowledge about the drone i am shivakumar ramakrishnan assistant professor department of aeronautical engineering shri ramakrishnan engineering college coimbatore so the term drone was first used by the military referring to any unmanned aerial vehicle that can fly in a pre programmed path so what is the need for using an unmanned aircraft let's see a clip the clip was taken from a movie named Stell, released in the year 2005. The mission given to the pilot was to destroy a building without collateral damage. So, the bomb has to be released to the basement of the building. This could only be possible when the bomb is released at a certain speed. We could see the pilot goes to a certain height and then from that he accelerates so that the bomb field piece would reach the velocity that have been previously calculated. knots to release velocity. Fifty knots to release velocity. His BP is spiking, sir. Release velocity attained. Throw engine away. So the bomb has been released and as planned, it reaches the basement. Now, look at the pilot. He went into unconscious due to high G loads. To implosion. Nine, eight, seven, eight. He has but think of the consequences Five, if he did it. So, why drones? Because we cannot risk human life for a complex mission and the human being's ability are limited to certain level. And also, drones can think and take decisions very quickly than a human being. The first drone was manufactured by a company called General Atomics. The name of the drone is Predator. The Predator is fit with only cameras when it was first manufactured, which is used only for surveillance missions. The future versions are equipped with weapons. So, does the application of the drones limited to military only? I could say no, because the drones have already started to show their abilities in variety of fields. Some examples are agriculture, photography, surveying of lands, inspection of power lines and search and rescue missions. But these are not limited. Uh, manufacturing cooperation limited. Our we start to have the idea of using UAV for high-risk firefighting in two, uh, two 
2012. In 2013, we started to implement it in the practice. Mainly, it armed at the high risk of fire count approach, count relay on, and count extinguish. The world's three biggest problem. And uh, it takes uh, more than seven years that we develop uh, this uh, uh, high risk uh, fi fighting drone. Um, and uh, today we will do this demo. It uh, uh, simulates the uh, California building a uh, few weeks before in Chongqing, the fire disaster and uh, we will see how it works. This drone, our drone, uses a powder tank, uh, which can effectively control the fire of 100 cubic meters of uh, closed, uh, closed space. And uh, uh, in this demo, we will show uh, how it works in a, a real case. <laughs> Please help. He's not breathing anymore. Please stay calm. What's your name? Joanna. Good. Joanna, we've got your location. The ambulance drone is on its way. Remove his top shirt to uncover his torso. Uh, okay. Great. Can you go to the nearest exit? The ambulance drone is almost there. Okay. I'm outside. I'll be talking through the drone now, so you can put down the phone. Now please pick up the drone and bring it to your father. You're doing great. Okay, pull the green bit. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good, I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna? Please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. We have a student with us today, Ms. Priya, third year aeronautical, and uh, she wishes to talk a few words about her uh, project on fire extinguishing drones. Let's listen to her. Hi, all of you. I am Priya, third year of BA Aeronautical Engineering, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Koyamutu. I am glad to take this opportunity to describe our project fire extinguishing drone. Uh, we started this work looking at the Amazon forest fire and the environmental impact. So we created an autonomous vehicle to detect the forest fire and uh, extinguishing the fire with the help of CO2 balls. Our work uh, carried out the framework of Arrow Modeling Club and the SRC Innovation Center. Now the current stage of our product that we have programmed drones and are using Arduino boards to detect the forest fire and the releasing CO2 balls. Still, the progress of work has been done. So far, we have presented our work on a number of platforms and the one year's Indian Sustainability Leadership Award from the Innovator Award with a cash price of 16,500 rupees. Uh, we'll continue and successfully complete our work. Thank you. Thank you for being with us till the end of all the four sessions. I hope this was useful to you and it helped you understand a little better about what is aeronautics and aeronautical engineering. Also a big thanks to SRC COIN and MHRD IIC. Thank you for your time.